Good afternoon all. Um, this set of eight 18650s came out of a, a failed power bank where the electronics failed and uh, I was just kind of wondering what to do with them and I'm pretty sure someone suggested that I put them in the QD188 power bank. Oh I'm going to need to bring the camera out to show that because it's quite big. Uh, this is the QD188 power bank. It has this uh, interesting display which is impossible to see. Let's change the light levels. Yes, that's better. Um, so currently the uh, multi-voltage output, you can see the little M there, is 9 volts. You can step that up by just pressing that, 9.1. If you've got something plugged into there, um, you can't change the voltage while there's a current being drawn. Uh, here's my test rig. It's the wire that came with this. That's a 2.5 millimeter connector so that's lighting up these 12 volt bulbs at 9.1 volts but if I press that now it just shows me the battery voltage the internal battery voltage because the internal cells are in series parallel arrangement but I can't change that 9.1 volts if I pull that lamp out I can change it to 9.2 9.3 and by pressing and holding it it goes up in one volt increments, 10.3, 11.3, 12.3. Let's put those back in on 12 volts and they're correspondingly brighter. So I put some uh, batteries in here. Let's see what's in here at the moment. I'm going to use a 20p to undo these because I tried to use a screwdriver and it started to damage that little lock thing. So a 20p it is. And I've got these for uh, LG 18650 cells. So I'm going to take them out now. Right, let's uh, get those out. Now I seem to remember it told me to put them in in the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll certainly do that with those cells. Uh, taking them out, it probably doesn't matter too much, but... I haven't got the manual, I can't find it at the moment. That's increasingly becoming a problem, not being able to find anything. Uh, so I'll start here next to the uh, activation hole with cell number one. But first I've got to get these uh, broken down in such a way that I can put them into uh, this uh, QD, this Kidian QD188 power bank. So where to start? Well, under here there was the um, protection board, so that can come off. Uh, I'll try and get all this gluey silicon stuff off as well. Now that uh, black wire I think just links the negatives on this end to the negatives on this end. The center here is just all positives so they're all uh, welded along this tab. It goes across and then so these are all positives on this side uh, but I want to get that off. That's linked to the positives and also the negatives on this end and then that wire as I say links the two negatives. So all this has to come off if I'm going to get these cells uh, into their sort of individual form. Right, so I should be able to uh, just cut that black wire off there and also cut it off the other end. Just uh, remove the link that goes between these negatives. Then I can start pulling that uh, welded strip off. Uh, as for the positives, yes I can probably break that there. Is that just going to break? I'll cut it. So that's that pack completely separated. Uh, I've still got to remove this battery protection board. So let's cut the uh, pos side of that. Cut that there. Lift that up. Uh, now I need to cut the neg side of that, which is there. don't think anything can short out while I do that. Okay, so that's off. And now I can start revealing the uh, welded strips on the ends. And just see if they will just tear off. Right, can I get this welded strip off uh, sardine can style? Yeah, that seems to be working. Oh, that broke. Uh, okay, I'll have to go under there, I guess. 
to be careful not to uh, touch the um, negative side of these cells but it's fairly well protected with these cardboard rings so I can rip that off yeah that came off and rip that one off yeah so that's all the uh, positives exposed now rip these negative tabs off two Yeah, that one didn't come very cleanly. And the last one. Okay, so they are now all starting to become separate. There's my first cell. Good. So there's all this uh, silicon that's all got to be kind of broken off. Otherwise, these won't sit uh, very well in the QD188. So I'm just going to have to sort of sit here cleaning these up bit by bit and removing the last of these spot welded tabs. Um, they shouldn't get in the way too much, particularly on the negative side, because that's where the spring is, but it's nice to uh, just clean that up as much as I can. Get most of that spot welded metal off positive and negative ends of these cells. And on the other pack, Let's get this uh, tabbing wire off the positive side. Okay, that's pretty much off. And again, on the negative side, this one which was never put on very straight. Just rip it off. Okay. That's pretty much done. Just clean it up now. Right, that's the cells uh, cleaned up pretty well with all that silicon stuff that was stuck on. I've scraped uh, that all off to the best of my ability. Um, on the negative side, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of detritus uh, still welded on there because in the power bank, it's got these springs. Uh, yes, they are the negative side. The positive side, though, are these relatively flat connection so I think I'm just gonna uh, try and clean up the positive side as best I can so that I get a reasonably good connection on there. So I've tried pulling this off with pliers and cutters I'm now using a knife just to get these last bits off where I can't get my pliers and cutters on them but actually this knife's not working very well unfortunately so I might have to go back to the cutters again let's try that Right, I think those are now clean. So let's put them in the power bank. Um, I've checked very carefully for polarity. Uh, the springs are all negatives. So uh, I'll do what the instructions told me and start putting them in from number one. So that's number one. Um, I guess I could put one in to complete the circuit and then add the others in later because that's not going to affect anything. Uh, so negative is, got to be really careful here because you just can't see these symbols very well in the plastic. But uh, yeah, negative is the spring. So that's number two. Uh, number three is there. And number four is there. And now I probably have to activate it because I doubt that'll work if I don't. So let's find a paper clip. Well, I found this very tiny screwdriver, so that'll probably do. Just got to click the switch. That's activated. And we've got 12 volts out on the multi voltage. That's cycling through the three outputs. So M is 12 volts. Uh, one is 5.3, that's USB one. And USB 2 is 5.25. I think a double click uh, moves you to that's 1 only, 2 only, and M only. So let's leave it on M. That's set to 12 volts. The unit is saying that it's 82% full. Let's add in the other cells and see if that changes. So that one goes there. Uh, that one goes there. Yeah, that one is that way around. And that one 
is negative towards me, so that's that way around. Right, that's all the cells in. Well, it's still saying 82%. It'll probably take a full charge and discharge sequence to get that to read accurately, but this is now full with eight cells. Let's put the back on there and uh, turn these with a coin. And that's the power bank fully loaded with those cells. So I can now use this in projects and videos. Right, let's check this is working. Uh, I'll double click to get that to cycle around the three voltages. Uh, let's use this. I've had to put it on an extension so that I can see it uh, for the USBs. So that's come on and that's showing 5.36 on USB. Oh, which one is it? Uh, USB 1. So this says that USB 1 is 5.3. So not a million miles apart. Right, that's switched off. Um, I think if you press both of these, you can tell it not to switch off. That's what not means. So the USB is working. Now, does the multi-voltage work at the same time as the USB? Let's plug that in. And yes, it does. So it's producing uh, 12 volts on the multi-voltage output at the same time as producing 5 volts on the USB. So that's quite handy. So this thing, as well as giving the percentage and the voltage on the output also tells you the current. So it's 1.12 amps on the 5 volts. Let's check what it is on USB 1. Uh, well, 0 amps, because this thing doesn't take much. Let's plug in a load, which is this little lamp. doesn't take a lot. It's just an LED torch head. And that's drawing 0.23 amps on the 5 volt USB 1. Now you can charge this in two ways, either using this 2.1mm uh, in socket uh, or the 5 volt USB, but the 5 volt USB will charge very slowly. I think it charges quite quickly. Uh, I can't remember what the input range is on this, but I seem to remember it was okay on my solar. That's currently 13.6. Let's plug that in, see what happens. Oh, well, it cuts the outputs. Uh, I think that's the battery voltage, 16 volts, and it's got an arrow to in. So I think that's charging. That display won't stay on. Auto not. Let's see if I can tell it not to switch off, but it might insist on switching off. Um, and just leave that on charge for a while. Oh yeah, it keeps switching off. Uh, see if I can get that 82% a bit higher. Right, just while that's charging, let's take a look at, look at uh, this stuff down here. It says it's the model QD188 Alt QC. Uh, capacity amp hours 20,000 milliamps. Uh, that doesn't really mean much, does it? Um, I suppose since these eight cells came out of a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank, then this is now a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. Uh, input is anywhere from 5 volts to 19 volts, so that's fine on my 13.5 volts from solar. The output can be switched uh, anywhere between 0 and 24 volts. Um, I think it really actually does go right down to 0, because of course this thing's got the um, LTC3780 buck boost chip in it, so it's a very flexible output voltage, plus you've got the two uh, USB 5 volts as well, made in China. Um, if you want to get hold of one of these, uh, it has this TEES logo, T-E-S-E, -E, but uh, generally it's referred to as a Kidian. Uh, the QD is Q-I-D-I-A-N, I think Kidian, uh, Q without a U, so it's the Kidian uh, QD188. So what would this um, battery voltage go up to? We've got effectively, well, we've got uh, pairs of cells in parallel, but four uh, cells effectively in series. So 16 volts would be four volts per uh, cell pair. They can go up to 4.2. So this should go up to 16.8, uh, I suppose, when it's fully charged. It doesn't seem to be charging very quickly on my solar input, so I don't think it's drawing a huge amount of current. Uh, that's still showing 82%, but that's flicking between 16 now and 16.1. I'm just going to have to leave it for a bit.